Hello everyone, this is Mr. Brain Junkie here, and today we'll be talking about a science fiction film called Battleship. Be ready for some spoilers ahead. In the efforts to find alien life beyond Earth, humanity has identified an Earth-like planet in a nearby solar system that's capable of sustaining life. Observation and communication labs are set up in Hawaii, where a giant satellite that orbits Earth every 24 hours can amplify the station signals and send it towards the faraway planet. The world watches as humans begin the first step in reaching out towards our solar system, and the satellite fires the signal into the unknown. Alex Hopper is a US Navy weapons officer, and his girlfriend Samantha demands that he speaks to her father about the relationship. It should be an easy task, except her father, Terence, is the Admiral of the US Navy and the one who taught Batman ninjutsu. On top of that, Alex manages to be late for their first meeting in the opening ceremony of the naval exercise and leaves a less than stellar impression with his soon-to-be father-in-law. It turns out that the man has a persistent habit of being undisciplined, and the Admiral is extremely unhappy with his performance, threatening to terminate his position. At the same time, Samantha is given a client whose name is Mick, and he used to be a colonel in the US military, but lost both of his legs during combat duty. The man is extremely depressed for not being able to perform as a soldier anymore, but Samantha tries to give him a different outlook. She tells him to go hiking with her on the island where the observatory is located, and tries to remind him that he's no lesser than the man he was before. Meanwhile, a gigantic asteroid is heading towards Earth and eventually splits into five pieces after passing through Jupiter. The Department of Extraterrestrial Contact notices the incoming objects, and they realize that the asteroids are showing what appears to be a formation, suggesting intelligence. He alerts the observatory in Hawaii and tells the scientists there that the objects are heading their way. One of the incoming spaceships crash into a satellite and steers off into a different path while the rest proceeds to fly towards the Pacific Ocean. Samantha notices four objects in the sky, and they crash into the ocean nearby, creating huge waves in the waters. The single spaceship flies towards Hong Kong and crashes into the population center, where the people panic as the buildings topple on top of them. After committing significant damage to the population, the Chinese are able to sample the object, but finds that the materials don't exist on the periodic table. From the way that the spaceship looks, they think that it's a communications device that has crash-landed into Hong Kong. On the other side, the Admiral receives the warnings from Pearl Harbor about the foreign entities nearby, but when he looks into the radar, nothing appears to be present. He orders three battleships, which includes Alex and his brother Stone, to exit formation and approach the supposed location. They send a team towards the alien objects to investigate, and the main character decides to board the ship after failing any meaningful contact. He touches the outer wall of the machine, but gets thrown back by a shock that sends him flying into the waters. The team quickly helps their friend, but notices that giant laser beams are shot towards the sky, creating what appears to be a shield around the area. The Admiral sees this and tries to contact the teams inside, but finds that their communication devices are jammed. A fighter jet tries to go through the force field, but explodes as it makes contact with the shield, effectively blocking the entire navy outside the radius. Giant warships begin appearing from underwater as the navy stares in disbelief. Stonehopper, in command of the Sansom, decides to give the ships a warning by sounding a horn, but the aliens respond by creating a massive sonic shockwave that breaks the glass and stuns everyone. Stone signals for John Paul Jones to fire a warning missile at one of the aliens which misses the ship, but this prompts the opponent to retaliate with shots of their own. The ship tries to destroy the incoming missiles, but fails to disengage one of them which lands on board and explodes, killing the captain in the process. Seeing their ships being attacked, Alex decides to fire at the aliens as well, but their attacks are useless against the enemy. Stone commands the Samsung to fire, but their missile systems cannot lock on after the shockwave, and their guided shots are not effective against the alien ship. The enemy retaliates by shooting numerous grenades at the ship as the Samsung tries their best to deflect them, but one manages to get through and disable their anti-missile systems. The aliens continue to fire and lands multiple hits on the battleship, which results in a huge explosion that kills everyone on board including Stone as his brother watches hopelessly. Alex demands to go back to the John Paul Jones, but upon returning, realizes that all the senior officers are dead, leaving him to be the person in charge. After just witnessing his brother die at the hands of the aliens, he orders the ship to engage and attack. 
The Japanese warship Miyoko, commanded by Captain Nagata, tries to back up Alex by firing at the enemy as well. But the aliens shoot back with numerous grenades and disables the ship with a huge explosion. Despite the impossible odds, Alex commands their ship to head towards the aliens and plans to ram into them in order to avenge his brother. The crew tells their captain that it's suicide and that they should save the people on Miyoko which is sinking rapidly. After Walter continuously reminds Alex of the dying sailors, the main character snaps out of his vengeance and orders them to save Captain Nagata and the drowning sailors. Surprisingly, the aliens have also ceased fire after seeing the battleship retreat to the other direction. However, the giant structure in the ocean begins assembling multiple shredding machines and fires them towards the harbor as another vessel leaves the area as well. Two of the shredders head towards the military base and proceeds to wreak havoc on the weapons aboard, destroying everything in sight. The third machine arrives at the population center and takes down the entire highway system by collapsing the bridges. Alex arrives at Miyoko and tries to save as many people as possible, but is shocked by the chaos of the situation as Nagata shouts at him furiously for attacking rashly. At the same time, Samantha notices the alien vessel arriving at the island and landing inside the observatory, planning to take over the place. The police notices the two and warns them to get off the island as they're on the edge of the battlefield. Instead of retreating, Mick decides to head towards the aliens and figure out what's really happening, despite Samantha's protest. On the other side, the crew of John Paul Jones managed to capture an alien that was drowning inside the ocean. They proceed to take off the creature's helmet and is surprised to see a humanoid that closely resembles people on Earth. Suddenly, the alien jumps up and grabs Alex, creating a telepathic link with him that shows the civilization's previous history of attacking other planets. An explosion occurs on the outer walls that knocks everyone onto the floor, and numerous other aliens arrive to rescue their comrade while the people are stunned. They quickly notice that another alien stayed behind in order to sabotage their weapon systems, and Alex rushes down into the ship to eliminate the threat with his teammates. Walter notices the alien breaking the door and entering the room. The creature begins scanning the weapon systems, and the man tries to stop him but gets thrown away like a ragdoll. Alex arrives and tries shooting at the alien, but the armor renders the weapons useless, and the team is quickly defeated by the creature as he knocks them to the floor one by one. He comes up with a plan and tells Korra to run to the weapon controls while he baits the alien to chase him outside. The creature continues to attack Alex, and just when he's about to finish off the main character, Korra maneuvers the cannon behind the alien and fires, turning him into pieces. Meanwhile, Mick and Samantha arrives closer to the observatory and finds that the police team they saw earlier are destroyed. They try to look for survivors, but notices that the aliens are nearby and quickly runs for cover. The two are nearly spotted, but manages to avoid detection. When the enemies leave, Samantha tries to call on the radio for help, but realizes that their signals are jammed. A scientist from the observatory runs towards them and tells them that the facility is taken. Apparently, the aliens are trying to use the human satellite system to re-establish communications with their home planet, as their communication vessels are destroyed. If the aliens manage to establish contact, humans can be looking at an extinction-level event. At the same time, one of the crews of the John Paul Jones who looks like Matt Damon's doppelganger discovers that the aliens' helmets are purposely made to dampen the sunlight. He tells Alex that the species are likely to be similar to lizards in that they can't see well in bright lights, but the captain fails to see how this can help them win the war. The crew of the battleship tries to figure out how they can eliminate the aliens with their radars malfunctioning, essentially making them blind unless they have direct visual contact. Captain Nagata suggests that they use the weather buoys around the oceans as detectors by measuring abnormally high water displacements that signifies the alien ship's location. Alex is impressed by the captain's methods and tells the man to take command of the ship as he clearly knows exactly what he's doing. Meanwhile, the scientist explains to the group that the aliens are waiting for the satellite to align with the island in order to send a signal back to their planet. Samantha suggests that they contact her fiancé as he can use the battleship to destroy the entire facility. The scientist believes that this is possible despite the signal jam, as he has a device at the observatory that can briefly bypass the EMP. The man sneaks inside of his laboratory and manages to grab the communications device, but is found out by one of the aliens who looks at him in curiosity. Surprisingly, the creature does not attack the man and instead allows him to leave. The scientist runs back to Samantha and they manage to establish a signal to the John Paul Jones. 
Samantha tells Alex that they have to destroy the observatory before the aliens can send back a signal, and they only have 4 hours before the satellite aligns with the island. Alex tells his fiancé to escape the facility immediately, but their signals are cut before he can finish the sentence. The crew begins seeing abnormal water displacements on the buoys, and Alex tells Korra to get on the weapons immediately. They predict the pattern of the aliens' movements and launches two missiles at the enemy, but their attacks miss the target and reveals their location at the same time. The alien quickly begins heading towards the battleship, and they fire the missiles again, only to miss the target once more. Suddenly, another enemy appears close by and begins charging at the crew as well. The two fires numerous grenades at the humans, and the people barely escape the attacks as the bombs explode on top of their ship. The aliens continue to maneuver closer as Captain Nagara locks onto both of them and fires. This time, the missiles are close enough where it strikes the enemies at the same time, causing huge explosions that knocks both of them into the waters. However, their celebrations are short-lived as a third enemy appears on the map, but this time, the alien moves erratically, making it impossible to hit them with the missiles. Alex comes up with a daring plan and brings the battleship towards the islands, but also putting everyone in danger as the rocks threaten to sink their ship. Nagata and Alex set up their sniper rifles as they wait for the enemy to appear in front of the rising sun. The giant spaceship arrives facing the John Paul Jones and begins preparing to fire their weapons. The two of them shoots at the opponent's windshield and breaks the glass, allowing sunlight to enter and blinding the aliens. The battleship fires everything they have at the enemy, causing a giant explosion that destroys the ship completely as it sinks into the water. The crew celebrates in their victory, but Alex soon realizes something approaching as he sees the giant shredders heading their way. He tells the people to run, but it's too late as the machines completely destroy the battleship, sending most of the crews into the water. Alex runs with Nagata as the battleship sinks into the ocean. They jump off the platform in the last second before the ship is completely decimated. Most of the crew survive the attack, but they feel helpless as they have no other way to stop their enemies from sending the signal. Alex disagrees and believes that they still have a chance as they can use the decommissioned battleship USS Missouri that's being used as a museum. They arrive at the giant ship, but Walter wonders how they'll have enough people to operate the machines, not to mention that everything inside is analog and they have no experience using it. However, they see the retired Navy veterans walking towards them and is more than happy to offer their assistance in saving humanity from complete destruction. They make a few adjustments and are quickly able to sail the battleship into the ocean towards the center of the force field, planning to destroy it once and for all. They arrive at the giant machine, but is surprised to see that it's capable of moving. The object transforms into another spaceship with numerous weapons and missile launchers preparing to attack at any moment. Alex tells Korra to point the guns towards the side of the ship as they charge closer towards the aliens. He then commands the Missouri to turn quickly to the side as the enemy prepares to fire. The aliens aim at the crew and targets their location, shooting a barrage of grenades. Suddenly, Alex yells to throw the anchors, and the massive weight lands into the ocean, stopping the ship and drifting its body towards the aliens and dodging the grenades that were fired. The battleship points towards the enemies and begins firing everything they have, landing numerous hits on the aliens as they destroy the giant machines creating the lasers. The entire shield collapses around the area, and the Admiral commands the fighter jets to attack the aliens right away. At the same time, the enemy begins firing out the signals in the observatory as the satellite moves closer towards aligning with the island. The battleship fires their final round at the communications facility as the aliens on the ocean tries to stop the humans by sending the shredders towards them. The attack manages to hit and destroy the entire place before the satellite can be aligned, and kills all the aliens in the explosions. Before the shredders can make contact with the Missouri, they're destroyed quickly by the fighter jets from the Navy, which saves everyone from being killed. The people cheer as they realize that humanity has finally won against the invaders. After the event, a ceremony is held to honor all those who died, including Stone, the brother of Alex Hopper. They also celebrate the brave soldiers who fought against the invading forces, including Mick, who supported the Navy by providing vital intels. Most importantly, Alex receives the recognition from the Admiral, who promotes him into commanding his own ship in the future. The main character celebrates with Samantha as they share a long-deserved kiss, but she reminds him about the talk with her father. 
Alex walks towards the man nervously and asks permission to date his daughter, but the Admiral welcomes him warmly and tells him that he knew about this a long time ago. He looks back at Samantha in happiness as the girl gives him a thumbs up, congratulating their success. However, somewhere far away from the military base, a family discovers a strange alien object in their farm. They're shocked to discover the alien inside, indicating that the invasion is not over. So what do you guys think about this movie? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my video, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.